hope you enjoyed the Biovision video and successfully worked through the quiz. If you correctly answered more than a half of the questions, you have a solid background in molecular biology, and this course might be easy for you to follow. If you scored less than that, no worry. You may just need some more time and effort to catch up. As a starter, I would advise you to check in Wikipedia the cells, organelles and molecules which you haven't recognized. Wikipedia has integrated access to a few key databases like Protein Data Bank, the main repository of biomolecular structures, gene locations, RNA expression patterns and many others. Let us take as an example the J-protein couplet receptor, which we saw in the movie. In the inner life of a cell, the process of leukocyte extravasation is shown at pretty much atomic resolution. I recommend you watch a narrated version of it. The link is in the description below. In this short fragment, a chemokine, shown in yellow, sends the signal of inflammation to the inside of the leukocyte using a chemokine receptor, shown in purple. This is our GPCI receptor, which transfers this signal across the plasma membrane to J protein shown in gold. Here is the Wikipedia entry with the general information on the cytokines receptors and for the link to the CCR5 receptor for which this three dimensional structure is available. This type of J protein couplet receptors are easy to recognize since they have seven long helices spanning the plasma membrane. The page contains links to all key databases containing structural description, Mendelian disorders associated with this protein, gene location, known orthologs, and so on. And I should mention yet another protein structure, which has become so iconic due to COVID-19, that it can be easily recognized as well. It is a so-called peplomer, a glycoprotein, a spike, which appears as a spike on a viral capsid or viral envelope. These protrusions bind only to certain receptors on the host cell. They are essential for both host specificity and viral infectivity. In the case of coronavirus, it's called spike or S protein. So, what is the goal of informational biology? It is to describe the mechanism of biological processes at the molecular and atomic level to answer the question, how life works. Why do we need to know this mechanism with the atomic detail? Because life is essentially a molecular process, and knowing its molecular mechanics provides us tools to interfere with it when needed. For example, to develop new drugs. Informational biology is interdisciplinary field of science. It combines structural biology, computer science, information engineering, and mathematics to analyze and interpret the biological data. In a less formal way, informational biology tries to understand the organizational principles within nucleic acids and protein sequences and structures. Therefore, structural biology is a fundamental part of it. Let us review the most important structural determination methods, which contributed to the phenomenal success of structural biology and informational biology in recent years. Seven methods for structure determination which are available right now. So here in this wheel the seven methods are represented. Uh, it's an interactive tool which we created. Um, here you can roll over the various methods like this and uh, you will obtain uh, important information about those methods. Before uh, we look into those methods individually, let us check what are the most popular methods of structure determination uh, presented in PDB, in Protein Data Bank. So for this end, I open front page of the PDB, and then I navigate to the tab called Analyze, and here there's a PDB statistics. So I clicked on the PDB statistics and here there's a section which is called PDB data dis distribution. Let's say, let's check distribution by experimental methods and molecular types. 
So here we are. Um, we have basically all the methods distributed or broken down into the uh, six categories. So one would be the crystallography and NMR and EM group together because they deliver the largest number of the uh, structures. The crystallography clearly taking the lead is almost 1,400 thousand uh, structures determined. And the my 11,000 structures and then CryM is rapidly catching up. In the last few years, they determined already almost 4,000 structures. All other methods are lumped here and the multiple methods. And here we have a neutral. Now let's <clears throat> revert back to this method, to this will. Three leaders in the field. So one is crystallography, another one is NMR, and another one is the cryem. So let's look, let's use this tool and then uh, check the advantages and disadvantages of each of these methods. X-ray crystallography is a technique used for determining the atomic and molecular structure of a crystal in which the crystalline atoms cause a beam of incident X-rays to diffract into many specific directions. By measuring the angles and intensities of these diffracted beams, a crystallographer can produce a three-dimensional picture of the density of electrons within the crystal. From this electron density, the mean positions of the atoms in the crystal can be determined, as well as their chemical bonds, their disorder, and various other information. What are the advantages and disadvantages of X-ray crystallography? Advantages Provides high-resolution information. Unlike solution NMR, it does not require protein be soluble in a high-concentrated solution. Unlike solution NMR, it can be applied to proteins with molecular weight more than 200 kilodaltons. Disadvantages Requires a protein crystal cannot be used with amyloid fibrils. Crystal contacts can distort protein structure. Cannot be used with very flexible molecules. Select an NMR approach to find out more. Due to the fast tumbling of dissolved proteins in solution, well-resolved NMR resonances of soluble proteins can be detected constituting the basis of NMR structure determination. This includes several steps, such as the acquisition of NMR spectra using a high-field NMR facility. Spectra processing. Spectra assignment. Assignment of the cross peaks to the specific protons. And extraction of the distances between protons which will be used in the model generation. The resulting solution of the NMR structures may vary depending on the amino acid position in the protein structure. The local resolution is determined by the number of the structural restraints per residue. The higher number of restraints per residue usually results in the lower root mean square deviation, or RMSD, of the positions of the backbone atoms in the residue in the ensemble of conformers representing NMR structure. The backbone dihedral angles phi and psi shall be located only in energetically allowed regions of the Ramachandran plot. There are three classes of experimental restraints used in NMR structure determination. Distance restraints, torsion angle restraints, and orientational restraints. Click to enlarge this table illustrates the advantages and disadvantages of solution NMR spectroscopy. The advantages of solution NMR spectroscopy are that it provides high resolution information. Unlike X-ray, it does not require a protein crystal and is not affected by crystal contacts. Solution NMR can be used to study flexible proteins and it reflects conformational averaging. However, the disadvantages of solution NMR are that it requires a high concentration of soluble protein. It cannot be applied to large proteins and it cannot be used with amyloid fibrils. Select an NMR approach to find out more. 
high-resolution conditions for protein resonances in solids such as amyloids, filaments, or precipitates can be established using fast magic angle spinning of protein samples in suitably designed rotors. Under these conditions, isotropic interactions can report on the local structure by detecting isotropic chemical shifts. In addition, decoupled interactions can be selectively reintroduced and used, for example, for transfer of polarization to derive a number of structural parameters. This table illustrates the advantages and disadvantages of solid-state NMR spectroscopy. Solid-state NMR spectroscopy can be used to study poorly soluble proteins. However, it cannot be applied to large proteins. Solid-state NMR requires a highly homogeneous sample, has trouble with flexible protein regions, as well as limited resolution and sensitivity. Consider the advantages and disadvantages of the solution NMR and solid-state NMR approaches to help you decide which suits your experiment best. Cryo-electron microscopy is a form of transmission electron microscopy where the sample is studied at cryogenic temperatures. The utility of cryo-electron microscopy stems from the fact that it allows the observation of specimens that have not been stained or fixed in any way, showing them in their native environment. This is in contrast to X-ray crystallography, which requires crystallizing the specimen, which can be difficult, and placing them in non-physiological environments, which can occasionally lead to functionally irrelevant conformational changes. The resolution of cryo-EM maps is improving steadily, and in 2014, some structures at near atomic resolution had been obtained using cryo-electron microscopy, including those of viruses, ribosomes, mitochondria, ion channels, and enzyme complexes as small as 170 kilo daltons at a resolution of 4.5 angstroms. A 2.2 angstrom map of a bacterial enzyme, beta-galactosidase, was published in June 2015. Cryo-electron microscopy has a variety of techniques which can be used. Popular ones are single particle analysis and cryo-electron tomography. Electron crystallography, including the analysis of two-dimensional crystals, the analysis of helical filaments or tubes. Electron crystallography can complement X-ray crystallography for studies of very small crystals less than 0.1 micrometers. Both inorganic, organic, and proteins such as membrane proteins that cannot easily form the large three-dimensional crystals required for that process. Protein structures are usually determined from either two-dimensional crystals, sheets or helices, polyhedrons such as viral capsids, or dispersed individual proteins. Unlike X-ray crystallography, the phase information could be read out directly from the Fourier transform of an electron microscopy image that had been scanned into a computer. Several high-resolution structures have been determined by electron crystallography, including the light harvesting complex, the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, the bacterial flagellum. The highly ordered helical polymers tobacco mosaic virus has now been solved by a single particle approach at better than 4.1 angstrom resolution. Here we have a table that illustrates the advantages and disadvantages of cryo-electron microscopy, or cryo-EM. Advantages. Cryo-EM can achieve high enough resolution. Unlike X-ray crystallography, cryo-EM does not require a protein crystal. Unlike solution NMR, cryo-EM does not require a protein be soluble in a high concentrated solution. Unlike mass spectrometry, cryo-EM does not require protein modification. Disadvantages Complex measurements and data analysis Difficult to use for proteins with molecular weight below 300 kilodaltons. In this section, we have reviewed three fundamental methods delivering structural information 
and filling the PDB data bank with absolutely crucial proteins. It's quite important to understand the limitations, advantages and disadvantages or ranges of applicability of each of these methods uh, to be able effectively uh, analyze the structures delivered. So a uh, very quite essential skill would be also um, a method to retrieve and visualize the uh, deposited structures in the PDB. So usually I'd recommend to use PyMol. We're going to practice structural retrieval and uh, rendering in the PyMol right now. Um, in the application exercise, we're going to play uh, with these ideas of the fundamental methods, explore the limitations of them, and then so on, discuss this, uh, as well as practice retrieval of protein structures and rendering them. So in this case, we are going to retrieve the new cryo-electron structures of the coronavirus spike proteins. So please watch a short tutorial uh, on the use of the PyMol and an application exercise where I'm going to apply these skills.